Good morning, good morning in the co-working hub. Uh, it's May the 5th. Uh, we are today in Sweden in Linköping with Niklas Sor, who is the founder of Do Space. And we are very happy to, to have you here, Niklas. Um, the purpose of the discussion was to um, you have some news. Uh, you raise capital. You are a space. Do space has seven locations today uh, in Sweden. But first of all, can you introduce yourself and tell us more about you, Niklas? Yes. Uh, so I'm the founder and CEO of uh, the co-working operator Do Space. Uh, born and raised in in uh, Sweden, uh, and um, actually Do Space is my first real uh, work after university. I, yeah. I decided to start the company as my first work. Uh, um, so maybe because I didn't find any else to to get employed. Uh, no, but, so you uh, self-created yeah. your own job? Yes. <laughs> no, but actually in the beginning, uh, I was looking for this type of space to work in. So, uh, and I didn't find it. So I created the solution that I self, myself wanted to, to buy. Uh, I think that's a pretty common uh, startup story. Yeah. Uh, so the same for me. And so, so you created Do Space in uh, 2017, right? Yes, we we opened our first space in uh, uh, March of 2017 here in Linköping, okay. and has since then uh, grown to seven spaces uh, around Sweden. So, so just to, to come back to the story, so link up. So, do we say link upping or link shopping? Link shopping. Link shopping. Yeah. So, you are in the center south of uh, or south center of Sweden. It's it's a small town, is it? Uh, is it pretty? Uh, big? Yeah, it's a pretty small town. It's the, the, the Sweden's not that big of a, com of a of a country. So, it's the fifth largest town in Sweden, uh, around one hundred fifty thousand uh, inhabitants. Uh, okay. So pretty small compared to mega cities, at least. Yeah. Okay, and so you 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 didn't make any posts since 2017, as you have already seven locations, and you are in four cities, right? Um, around link up, doing shopping, or or uh, the road. Uh, in other towns as well. We uh, we are in Lind shopping uh, and in uh, a town called North shopping, another one called Jön shopping. And the fourth one is Javle. Uh, so we're evenly spread out uh, um, uh, in cities that are similar to Lean Shopping. Uh, university cities, uh, roughly the same size, uh, all situated uh, uh, around uh, Stockholm, the Stockholm area, you could say. Yeah. Okay, so how uh, big are the, are the locations? Is it uh, similar? Is it, uh, is it um, or you have one big space and some, some satellites, smaller locations? Uh, so we, uh, um, they are roughly around from thousand to two thousand square meters in size, uh, and uh, we are right now we only have uh, several spaces in Lin Shopping, but we do want to have a network of spaces in the towns that we are operating. Uh, so we actually opened our second location in Gävle uh, recently, just a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, but that's roughly the size. Uh, if you look back in time, we've actually grown. So the spaces have grown in size as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, and what drives the, the growth for, for do space? Because it's pretty, it's doing pretty well after three, four years. Um, to, to already have seven locations, uh, not in easy markets, we can expect, because most of the time this growth happens in big cities, but we are in the middle-sized cities. Um, so how do you explain this? What are the drivers, uh, would you say? Uh, but I would say uh, in smaller towns like the ones that we are operating, uh, the network effects or the networks in the uh, business community is quite strong. Uh, these smaller towns have a sort of a um, uh, big brother, little brother syndrome to Stockholm and Gothenburg and all of the other larger cities in, in uh, Sweden. So uh, we've actually had success in uh, tapping into that business community. Uh, the companies are looking for a space to meet and a space that uh, offers something else than just square meters. 
So from the beginning, the the um, growth came from there. That companies mm-hmm. wanted to have a space that that was more social and more network oriented. Uh, but now we're seeing uh, a change in the market. Actually, I think we're we're going to come back to that. But uh, now we see that the growth is also coming from more services. Companies need uh, want more flexibility, but mm-hmm. also more value uh, added to their to the square meters that they're uh, renting or using. So, so is it to do because we know that a big deal of the co-working spaces grew first of all because there was demand from freelancers and startups and small companies. Um, you see that profile, average profile changing as well? Uh, or is it still you know, the traditional profile of users you, you have in your spaces that, uh, that is still in demand for hospitality, workspace, um, some more better service and warmth in the, in the workspace? Yeah, well, uh, we do see a change. I think that uh, the freelance community in the smaller cities is quite small. So from the beginning, our community actually consisted of, um, uh, how, what, what do you call it, uh, freelancers from big, bigger companies. So uh, employees of, of the larger uh, companies in Lean Shopping, for example, wanted to have a, a, a network and a space to meet. So they actually uh, became members then, but only uh, like a one person membership, mm-hmm. uh, perhaps, a, perhaps a business developer or something like that. Uh, but now we're seeing that the larger companies are actually uh, moving into our spaces uh, with their entire operation. So that's uh, a, a change that we are seeing, uh, but we have never really been big on freelancers uh, from the start. And I think that's because of the markets that we we are in. Uh, freelancers are a bigger, there's a bigger pool of freelancers in the larger cities, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think. Okay, so 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 now it was we say seven locations, four cities. Um, how did you go through the pandemic from a co-working operator in Sweden? Because we all have seen Sweden taking a different way than some others. Um, do, would you say that you have been impacted the same way other co-working operators in Europe has been, or this different way to address the the pandemic um, lowered the impact on your activities? Well, we've, we've been hit in a pretty big way. We lost uh, roughly around 20% of our of our customers uh, uh, last spring. Um, I would say, of course, Sweden has had uh, um, uh, an easier way or easier uh, restrictions than other countries in Europe. But uh, since uh, lots of the responsibility of uh, of the um, uh, not meeting others has been placed in the uh, on the um, uh, inhabitants in Sweden. People have actually followed their restrictions, so mm-hmm. our spaces has been very very quiet. Uh, even though people have been allowed to come, we have been allowed to be open, mm-hmm. uh, but people have stayed home quite uh, in, to quite a uh, high extent. Mm-hmm. So uh, we have been hit. Uh, it's been a rough year, but we've also seen. S- uh, we've had quite high activity in, in customers uh, or customer activity. So we've had lots of talks with customers about returning to the office when the restrictions are lifted. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but it's been a hard year, a very strange year for us. Yeah, even in Sweden. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So, so despite all that, uh, you managed to raise, so I calculated roughly 1 million euro. Uh, yes. something yeah. like that. Um, so in order to fund the expansion of new space, uh, because you are very ambitious, you want to open up 30 locations by 2026. So how did it happen? So, so how did you overcome the, maybe the fear of investors to invest in, in a business that is almost frozen for the moment and uh, yeah. um, oh, and why? <laughs> yeah, no, but we, um... As with all investors or investing in companies, I think we we uh, put forward our uh, view of the future, and we saw that um, and the investors believed in our our um, view of what the future will look like in the uh, office market. Uh, so, and the investors have actually said that they 
uh, think it's a good timing to invest in a company like ours because they believe like we that uh, the restrictions with remote work and all of the implications of that going forward will have a positive effect on uh, the, uh, the demand for our types of services. So that's basically how we did it and why we did it. We, we believe that we can go even faster when uh, the world becomes a little bit more normal, thanks to all of the uh, learnings that bigger organizations have, um, what they have learned from, from remote work during this pretty long time. Um, so that, yeah. that's, the, that's the pitch you had with the investor, that definitely now you see this demand growing because everybody we, remote worked, uh, everything is digitized. Yes. So uh, we need you. Yes. And we, um, I think that if you tune into all of these um, talks and seminars and workshops about what the future workspace will look like, everybody is mentioning flexibility. Uh, and that flexibility is key to, um, to uh, meet customers' demands in the future. And uh, the real estate is a pretty um, rigid industry. Uh, it's been working the same way for a long time. So I, I believe that when we went to the investors uh, and sold in this future of, of uh, another way to look at real estate, we also uh, uh, put forward that we can be a tool for real estate companies to, um, to follow that uh, movement in the market to a more flexible solution. So, uh, and that's actually what we're trying to do. We're, we're trying to move away a little bit from a pure co-working space operator to more of a, uh, uh, a tool or a, um, a company that can help uh, real estate companies uh, develop their, their um, solution towards uh, companies. So you will develop also services towards yes. them? Okay. Yeah. In, in which way? So, so is it because we speak a lot more about franchising now? Also, of, of spaces, is it one of the uh, road you could you could go to? Uh, um, yeah, we haven't decided to do a franchise. Of course, that's one thing that we're looking at. But right now, we're working a lot with partnerships with real estate companies, uh, where we uh, perhaps open a co-working space within their building but we also operate and manage the rest of the building uh, yeah. with services and uh, different types of solutions to sort of increase the, the value of the entire or the value of being a, um, uh, an occupant in, in the rest of the building. Um, so, so that's this in uh, boundaries between facility management and hospitality, ma hospitality, hospitality management that is getting blurrier yeah. that you are also seeing now and you adapt to that that shift that we see happening as well, right? Yes, uh, and actually we're, we, we come into the project so early right now that we also have a part in how the, if, if it's a new building or a remodel of an, an, an entire building, we're sort of almost like a consultancy firm for how the building should be, um, um, should be built or designed. Yeah to yeah. facilitate maximum flexibility and value. So, so it's the, sort of a mix between facility management and the uh, uh, like facility <laughs> consultancy firms and what they're doing uh, and, and the co-working space. And does it mean that you, you, will be, you will engage with very specific kind of real estate owners? So for instance, we might see um, property firms having uh, class two or three buildings, salt fashions that they want to uh, rejuvenize and uh, fit out better, but indeed keeping the, the the aspect of older building that sometimes has some charm and some interest yeah. as well. Or no, you go for the full class E buildings, uh, skyscrapers, brand new, glassy, uh, and this is the, your target as well. We see we see that there is some difference sometimes between yeah. those kind of assets. Uh, our approach to that is that uh, all buildings can. Or we want to develop a different uh, identity for each building that we move into. And I see that uh, 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 it's, a, it's a question for us to handle as well. With, before we looked at properties and perhaps thought that we didn't need to have the top of the line uh, facilities, but more and more signs are 
pointing towards that co-working is moving towards a more premium offering. Mm -hmm. And then the, uh, the property in itself needs to be a premium uh, type of, of building. Uh, but of course, I, I still believe that you can, co-working can be a, a solution to, to um, uh, add value to harder or buildings with more complex or more, uh, not that straightforward um, type of value. Uh, yeah, yeah, sort yeah. Of. So let, can we speak a little bit about the investor that, that poured money into your, your company? So you, you told me they were a VC, but also related to a property company. So why did, did you pick them or did they pick you or what happened? <laughs> yeah, uh, no, so we, uh, uh, this round we had two lead investors. Uh, one VC firm, uh, which is called Almi, and that's actually a, a, in Sweden we have a state-operated VC firm that's supposed to uh, drive, um, um, fill the gap uh, between uh, startups and when the real uh, 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 private VC firms come in. Uh, so, uh, but it's still a VC firm. It operates under the same uh, conditions that, as the private VC firms do, mm -hmm. but perhaps they take a little bit more risk. Uh, and their goal actually is to 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 um, uh, yeah, make the most money out of their investments. Instead, they want to uh, keep Sweden in front in the front line of innovation and uh, um, new cust or new. Uh, uh, new uh, businesses mm -hmm. uh, so that was uh, one and the other one is an investment branch of a, uh, a small uh, real estate uh, company here in uh, Lean Shopping actually. Uh, I have two questions uh, one is from uh, Stéphane de, Brabant, de Brabander uh, he asks in your panel of services what are your best sellers? Sorry, do you say that again? In your panel of services, yeah. what are your best sellers? Oh, um, I would say meeting, uh, meeting rooms and catering and uh, everything surrounding meetings, um, meeting services, yeah, okay. event services. Okay, more than, uh, you have private offices and things like that, I guess? So yes, of course, yeah. Uh, if, if you look at uh, our membership, uh, platform uh, private offices are the biggest uh, income yes by far yeah. and the other question is thank you for your testimony did you raise money through institu institutional investor funds and institutions or business angels or the crowd or even your members also uh, uh, um, in the institutional money yeah as you explained um, yeah and, and uh, what was the approach? Did you approach them? Did you make a short list of players you wanted to engage with? Uh, how long did it take, the, the process? Yeah, so we uh, 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 we shot or aimed for a broad spectrum of, of firms and uh, people. So basically we talked to lots and lots of people, uh, VC firms, private investors, angels, uh, you name it. Um, uh, but we wanted to have both capital and brains. So we wanted to have the uh, real estate side of the um, or competence from the real estate industry. So we wanted to have a real estate company behind us since we're moving towards uh, a future where we want to be a, a, a solution for real estate owners. Um, the other thing is that we wanted to have the competence of scaling pretty fast and uh, people that has been uh, on journeys with uh, companies that grow quickly. And uh, that's why we also wanted to have a, a, a traditional VC firm, sort of, yeah. And, and, and so how, how does it uh, materialize this involvement of the real estate side and expertise? So because it's a, as a VC firm, so do, do you have sometimes access to those experts from the real estate side of the, of the firm? Um, to ask questions or do they interact or they check a, check your, I don't know, uh, so, some term sheets or whatever? Yeah, uh, both. Uh, so both investors in this case are members of our board. So they're involved with our strategic uh, development and strategic questions. Uh, but we also have some sharing of, of the organization. So I can go to our 
uh, real estate investor and sort of talk about uh, term sheets and whatever uh, with them. Um, yeah. You have access to them. Yeah. So um, regarding the 30 locations you plan to open up, uh, is there a specific plan? So it's not that you are necessary. So because sometimes when we see real estate investor entering the game, uh, most of the time of pretty often, it's just to bring the service in their own properties and yep. not expand beyond. That's not your situation, right? And, and, and how do you, for these 30 locations, is there some target, some areas you are targeting? It's like a, a spiraling expansion or? Yeah, no, that was actually a pretty important uh, perspective from our side that we did not want to have uh, too big of a real estate company to invest in us because we were afraid that they would uh, sort of force us to only be in their properties because we believe that our portfolio of spaces needs to be um, in different types of buildings and uh, properties are always owned by different types of, of companies. Uh, so um, uh, the, the property uh, real estate company that we have is a pretty small real estate company. Uh, they only have spaces in Lean Shopping. So as soon as we go uh, outside of Lean Shopping, uh, they cannot help us. Yeah. So that uh, takes away that uh, sort of um, tricky question. Um, but uh, when we're looking at uh, our expansion plans, we want to expand to more uh, cities uh, like Lean Shopping and John Shopping, the same size roughly, uh, but we also want to expand in the cities that we are right now. So we want to have a network of sites within each market that we're operating in. Uh, always the situation now in um, in Sweden from that perspective. Um, do you see really some co-working brands? So we know some of them are owned by the biggest real estate players, like in most of the European countries. Uh, and um, and but they are mainly concentrated in Göteborg uh, um, and, and Stockholm and Malmo, um, and then players like you are trying more to develop a regional base, um, or no, it's mixed. Everybody is going going everywhere, tapping into the same market segments. Yeah, no, I uh, right now we have a, a situation where. Stockholm and Gothenburg and Malmö uh, are the markets that have uh, several uh, or many uh, co-working operators. But in the markets that we operate in, we're actually uh, alone in most of them. Uh, so that's our niche, basically, and our strategy uh, to, to grow in those types of cities. Um, I think that uh, when you listen to uh, people uh, from the larger co-working operators, they tend to um, uh, look past smaller cities. They they say that the uh, the concept do not work in in smaller cities, and that's why we started from the beginning, and that was what we want to prove prove and, them and wrong and, uh, and have proved them wrong. So yeah, uh, why do you think they, they think like that? Because they think the market is too small, or they're too used to work only with super big corporates in CBD. Uh, areas and no if you look at what they say uh, it's basically they say that uh, the rents are too low in in these towns and so i guess that they look at their operations from a cost perspective view that they uh, yeah. uh, uh, their solution is um, cost effective towards their their customers but we look at it from another perspective and say that uh, you should not move to us uh, 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 if you want to lower your costs, you, you want to move to us if you want to add more value and have a better solution. And that is still possible to do in smaller cities that have lower um, square meter rents. So, so the value is not in the flexibility only, it's definitely in the service you are providing. Uh, yes, yeah. and the network of, of members. Yeah. Do do have members invested uh, also, or you you got them in the, uh, uh, We we have one small member that's invested. Actually, uh, we we get that question a lot, uh, 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 but we haven't um, uh, accepted uh, yet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's nice to have customers that want to invest in your business. Then that's a good um, um, uh, compliment, yeah, I would say. 
yeah. shows the commitment and the, and the will to to keep them. Um, awesome! I think we we arrive at the end of uh, our conversation. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time and 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 sharing your insight with us. Um, Thank you. We hope to see you at in Vienna in December for the Co working Europe conference. And yes, I would love to. Have, we we can uh, have everything settled and we all get in good health and vaccinated and everything. Yes. Uh, by, by the end of the year, um, all the best uh, for you in in Sweden. Thank you. And uh, and thank you, you for having me. Yeah. Bye bye, Nicholas. Bye. Bye bye.